In this video, we're going to discuss scheduling and some of the popular scheduling algorithms, such as round robin, first come, first serve, multi level feedback queues, shortest job first, and shortest remaining time. So, what actually is scheduling? Well, multitasking operating systems give the appearance of more than one task executing at the same time. Either within a single program, multiple threads might need to be executed at once. Good examples of computer games. You might be needing to move a player object while at the same time moving enemy objects, or while playing music and updating statistics on the screen like the player's health and score. In a multi-user environment, a number of users will need servicing seamlessly simultaneously. For this to be possible, Operating systems need a scheduler. The scheduler manages which processes to execute next and the length of time that process can execute for. So here, process A is a new process. Now the number is just abstract and it indicates the length of time before it finishes. At the moment, it's in what we call the ready queue. When the currently executing process finishes or is blocked or suspended, process A can move into a running state. From here, it will either finish executing completely and leave the system, or it could get blocked as it requires an input or command, meaning it can't continue until more data is received. Or it could have run out of allotted time. Typically, each process will gain a certain amount of time in the processor, after which it's suspended and moved to the back of the ready queue. Now, there will often be several processes in the ready queue that the operating system has to deal with. And there are several different scheduling algorithms that can help the processor manage this. The first to consider is first come, first serve. And you can think of this just like a supermarket queue. The processes are executed strictly in the order they arrive. If a process takes a long time, the others behind it simply have to wait their turn. The time these different processes take to execute is irrelevant. The fact that A is 10, B is 5 and C is 12, the jobs further back simply have to wait for the current job to finish or leave the CPU before they're allowed to be processed themselves. The next algorithm is shortest job first. Now this picks the process that takes the shortest amount of time and runs them until they finish. For this to work, the scheduler needs to know how long each process is going to take. We can see process B is shorter than process A. So the scheduler queues them up in the order CAB. They execute as before, entering the processor and executing until they either finish or exit the CPU, allowing the next process in the queue to enter the running state. The next algorithm to consider is round robin. Now here, each process is allocated a fixed amount of time, known as a time slice or quantum. If the process isn't complete by the end of its time slice, it returns to the back of the ready queue. So let's just assume for simplicity, our time slice is five. Process A enters the running state, execute for five ticks before it's suspended and joins the back of the ready queue. Process B enters the running state, executes for five ticks, and is now complete, so it finishes. Process C enters the running state, executes for five ticks, before it's suspended and joins the back of the ready queue. Process A is now at the front of the ready queue again. It enters the running state, executes for five ticks, and is now completed, so leaves. 
Process C is now at the front of the ready queue. It enters the running state, executes for five ticks before it's suspended, and joins the back of the ready queue. Yet again, process C is at the front of the queue. It enters the running state, executes for two ticks, and is completed. The next algorithm to consider is shortest remaining time. Now, this is very similar to shortest job first. However, this is what's known as a preemptive algorithm. It means the process can be suspended if a high priority process joins the queue. So let's start by bringing in process A and C into the ready queue as shown. Process A has the shortest remaining time, so it enters the running state. As that is happening, a new process B arrives. As process B has the shortest remaining time, it goes to the front of the ready queue. Let's imagine process A has had four ticks running in the CPU. Process B has the shortest remaining time. So process A is suspended and goes to the back of the queue and process B enters the running state. Process B is now finished. And as process A has the shortest remaining time, it goes to the front of the queue. So before we move on, let's consider process blocking. So here, process A enters the running state. While it's in running, it requires data from the hard disk. Now the hard disk is incredibly slow compared to the CPU. So the process is blocked until this input request has been serviced. Process B can go ahead now and enter the running state. While process B is running, process A receives the data it needs. It now needs to generate an interrupt to let the scheduler know that it's ready to rejoin the queue. Finally, let's look at multi-level feedback queues. Now, in all the previous examples we've been discussing, we've used a single ready queue. The multi-level feedback queue builds upon these previous standard scheduling algorithms with the following design principles. It separates processes into multiple ready queues based on their need for the processor. It gives preferences to processes with short CPU bursts, and it gives preferences to processes with high input-output bursts. Any input-output bound process will sleep in a wait queue to give other processes CPU time. The multi-level feedback queue allows for processes to be shifted between the various queues. If a process has too much CPU time, it will be moved or demoted to a lower priority queue. If a process is an input-output bound one or an interactive one, it will be moved to a higher priority queue or promoted. And if a process is waiting too long in a low priority queue and starving, it will be moved to a higher priority queue. These different queues can also be set up to use different scheduling algorithms. So just as a nice summary, we've listed here the five scheduling algorithms you need to be aware of for the exam, given you a brief description and stated whether they're preemptive or non-preemptive. This might be a good point to pause the video and take some notes. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. From all the open programs in memory, how does the CPU decide which process to execute? Thank you.